Pat Love back with Pat's Two Cents. I have one more. Verse 26 and verse 27. Same chapter, Leviticus 20. Now, the reason I share these is not so we can go back to legalism, but so that you can understand what God's attitude is toward this stuff that we call okay in today's society. Just because people aren't dropping dead like flies mm -hmm, does not mean that God's okay. You're okay. I'm okay. Everybody's okay. What you're doing is okay, and that's okay. I would call it the okay society. Back in the day when things were going chaotic, they used to call it the the okay corral. You know, they bang, 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 bang. Now sin has taken off into such such uh, craziness, <laughs> such popularity that we think. Everybody's okay. Well, taint okay, y'all. And I'm going to read a little something, something to you to let you know what God feels about it. Verse 26 and 27. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you from other people that ye should be mine. A man also, or woman, that hath a familiar spirit, mm, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. So for those of you, Pat's two cents, for those of you who think, that dabbling in the occult, dabbling in witchcraft, dabbling in, in demonic little toys and games like the Ouija board and tarot cards and all that little fascinating stuff and watching little demonic movies like Terry po Car Harry Potter, whatever his name is, watching these little cartoons with little monsters and goblins straight from hell. Wizards, witches, spells, magic. Ooh. Yeah. For those of you who think that's just tenolating entertainment, harmless, but fun. Mm -hmm. God has made it very plain. He wants you to have no part of that. See, mm. This is what you're doing when you dabble in that kind of lifestyle. You lift your head up to heaven and you talk to the Lord for whatever reason. Maybe you need him to help you out of a fix, out of a bind. But then you turn around. Thank you, Lord. And you turn around and you're like, hey, devil, I'll meet you tonight at 9 p.m. Ooh, suck it, suck it. What you got for me? And you're like, you think that's okay. But see, what you don't get, that and that combined in one life, that's called cohabiting. You cannot cohabit with sin. You cannot uh, date the Lord and sleep with the devil. You cannot love mammon. God and mammon. It's one or the other. You got to make a choice. I know you like having it both ways. Most men do. They like having their wife and a little something, something on the side. Or a woman has a husband. Maybe he doesn't satisfy her, so she gets a little something, something on the side. That might go on 10, 15, 20 years, and everybody in the family know it. Everybody in the family will know all about it. Nobody's even hiding it. It's just what we do. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? God ain't winking. God ain't smiling. You're either with him or you're with the devil. You decide who you're going to hook up with. They're playing two against the middle. They're straddling the fence. No. No, it doesn't go like that. That's what you. That's what I would refer to as a cafeteria style religion and it's religion 
It's not relationship. See, when I was married, well, I was married to my husband, but I mean, when he was alive, okay. I had a neighbor come on to me. That neighbor is dead now. That neighbor tried to come on to me to see if we could hook up. And we could climb in the sack in the back in the corner in the dock on the slide. And I looked at him and I said, do you ever hear the word respect? R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find out what it means to me. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Listen, I respect that man across the street in that wheelchair. That happens to be my husband, not you. So if anybody gets a little piece of this, it'll be him, not you. Because that's the one I'm married to. And if he can't function and he can't take care of business, then neither will I. I'm not going to go find something on the side. Because I love and respect him too much. When I said my vows to him, I meant it. Till death do we part, baby. I'm yours and you're mine. And it stays like that. Nobody else gets to play on our turf. We don't get to play on anybody else's turf. It's him and me, baby. And now that he's with the Lord, guess what? I'm still his wife. I don't play. My point in saying that is many of you have no more commitment with your husband or your wife than you do with the ice cream man going down the street. You say, okay, I'll buy ice cream from you tomorrow. Or I'll go to the store. Maybe I'll go to the grocery store. Maybe I'll order it online. Whatever. There is no loyalty because that's part of marketing. But that's not part of marriage. And in this day and age, the sad part is many would have it be like that. You think it's okay. So you commit spiritual adultery. And then on top of committing spiritual adultery, you don't go to God to consult, say, Lord, what should I do? The Bible says, acknowledge him, not him. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. But no, you want to acknowledge him. So you go to the tarot card reader. You go to the Ouija board. You go to the wizards that peep and mutter with mediums psychic hotlines you go to all of that because you want an instant fix you want instant gratification and god is saying look our relationship is not a microwave relationship with me you have to wait for me to give you the answer because i don't hop because you pop your finger i say when you get the answer and this may not be the time because i've got your best interests at heart Whereas Satan will make you think like, oh, I'm going to give you everything you want. You want this? You want that? Sure. I'll hook it up. I'll hook a sister. I'll hook a brother up. Yeah, you hang with me, kid. I'll show you the road. That's right. I'm your man. And all the time, Satan is preparing the little trap for you. He doesn't have your best interest at heart like God. But see, God doesn't play. He's not going to be a little bellhop. That's what you want. So since God ain't hopping to your tomb, you turn to Satan and you start acknowledging the psychics and seeking their wisdom and seeking their guidance and going to astrologists and doing all, I mean, just consulting with everything but God. Because you want your answer now. You're going to get more than that. Take my word for it. And it ain't going to be a blessing. When it's all said and done and the dust settles and you look around, you're going to realize somebody's been had. It's you. Keep playing with the devil. Keep playing on his turf. Keep going to his neighborhood. Keep slipping around his corner here. And see what Satan, he'll have so many attachments tied to you, you won't be able to cut loose any of it. And you wonder why your life has turned into a life of curses and chaos and, and 
violence and and depression and suicidal craziness. Where did all this come from? Sleeping with the enemy. 